I'm a New Mexico girl, so I was born in Gallup, New Mexico. And my dad worked for the telephone company, so we just moved all over New Mexico. And my, mom, my mom's roots are in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I always think of myself as being very tied to Santa Fe because my grandmother and, and her people, they go back 10 generations. So I always think of Santa Fe as sort of where my roots, Santa Fe and the Galisteo area are my roots. Um, so I, I grew up all over New Mexico. I spent my childhood in Farmington. I spent my teenage years and my college years in Las Cruces. And then I moved away from my state because I was in that stage where you think that you're sick of where you're from and you want to experience other things. And so I lived in Tucson for 10 years. And then I had my son and I felt like I needed to go back to where I came from. So we moved back to Santa Fe. And that's when I started um, really passionately painting. My grandmother had died at that point, and I really, really felt a need at that point to start putting memories down on canvas. And that's when I started painting seriously. My father and grandfather are, were artists. So they, they weren't doing it as a profession, but they, they were always painting as a hobby. So I saw my dad behind an easel, and he always encouraged that in me and my sister. So we were always, um, always drawing. He'd bring his drafting paper from the office, and we would grab it, and we would draw. I mean, it was just something I don't ever remember not drawing. So I've always been artistic, and I've always drawn. But the actual uh, thought of picking up paints and, and brushes was intimidating until I became an adult, and that's when I started started doing it, I think around 2000, where I started trying it. And, um, but yes, I've always had a very artistic family. My, my dad encouraged it and nurtured it and taught, taught both my sister and I. So definitely it was nurtured in our family. My dad was not one of those dads that no matter what piece of paper you pushed at him, he was going to say, oh, honey, it's beautiful. He was very much expected a level for me and my sister. And I mean, it was, it, at times it was hard because I was always trying to please, I always felt like I had to jump up to that next step to get that response from him to say, it. but then I think, but it did teach me to be technically, to try to hit things the best I could. Um, but yes, he definitely did teach me, um, you know, basic technique of how to use paint and color and shadowing and all that and gave me the basics. So I'm, d I'm definitely thankful for that. After I graduated high school, I went to New Mexico State University and I got a dual bachelor's in special ed and elementary ed. Um, my sister had gotten a fine art degree there, but my dad really felt like, uh, I don't know, he didn't encourage me to get the same degree. He really felt like, I guess, that maybe it wouldn't be a good idea for me to try to make a living at it. I think, you know, it's, which is really interesting because I think I really wanted to go into art, but my dad at that point was very practical with me and said, listen, you need to get a skill that you can make a living at. And so he didn't really encourage it, but I still, you know, always loved art, but I, I started studying education, but it just seemed like the art was something it, I, it was going to be something I wanted to do and I couldn't, it was like a little bird in my ear. No matter what, I always felt like I wasn't on the right path. So um, I'm self-taught. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't go to art school. I didn't you know, get that training like my sister did. And for a long time I felt it was really hard being a folk artist to get people to take you seriously because you can't say I went to XYZ Fine Art Institute and you don't have that behind you. So, you know, especially living in Santa Fe, there's a lot of sort of art snobbery. And when they find out you're not trained, there is sort of, they put the deaf ear to you to a certain extent. So I think I've had, you know, to fight for that respect and, and because I don't have that behind me because I'm self-taught. But I, I love that, that I don't have any of that behind me. And I, I think when I do see other artists that I'm drawn to, I often, I ask them, are you trained formally? And they tell me no. I think self-taught artists, folk artists, tend to be very uh, organic in what comes out of them. It has not been uh, manipulated or, or uh, guided. It's just what comes out of the person. And I think that's beautiful. You know, not to say that, that I, I think people that are trained, I mean, they blow me away 
as well. But I just think there's something really amazing when I meet ours that are self-taught and do well in spite of not having all that school behind them. I just feel really blessed. I feel blessed that I've had um, been able to do some of the things I have, but I think too a lot of it, you know, living in Santa Fe where artists are a dime a dozen, it's you really have to want it and really have to push it and try to find those opportunities where you can because nobody's gonna chase you down to buy your art. And so, you know, you, I, I just try to do my best to, to be passionate about what I do and try to always, you know, sell myself to a certain extent, get your, make sure to get yourself out there because no, you know, nobody's going to run after you to buy your art. You have to be passionate about it and true to yourself and, and genuine in what you're doing, you know. So any, you know, any successes for me, I just have to, I feel blessed. I feel blessed for any of those opportunities, you know. My favorite subject is always uh, family, um, traditions of the Hispanic family. I've done, um, my, my, both my great-grandmothers were midwives and curanderas and um, in Galisteo delivered babies and they were medicine women and I've done paintings of depicting um, a woman just having had delivered her baby and the, you know, the partera or the midwife there to the side and, you know, I, I try to always have a genuine memory or connection to something when I'm painting, you know, um, I think so much of, of my family, the values of family, my grandmother, the kitchen, I love doing rooms. I am so fascinated at the thought of a painting being a room and looking into that room almost as if you can step into that room and I love putting an arch into another room, that feeling of being able to sort of go in and be there and exist in, in a painting, I love that. I've always done that and I, I just find that really fascinating. I just, you know, my grandmother had this beautiful little house and all these memories of the kitchen and family and voices and food and smells and all these things that, that I remember growing up, I just really, feel it's important for me to put those things down on canvas because I don't want to forget, you know, what that was like. You know, my grandma's passed on and, you know, I have so many memories that just, I just feel like once it's on canvas, it's there. That seems to be the first thing I tend to do in a painting is put that foundation of, of warmth and stability. Because I think, when I think about family in the home, I think of that foundation of, of, of warmth in the family. And when I think of Hispanic, the Hispanic people in, in, in my family, there's a warmth there. You hug people when you don't know them. When someone walks through the door, you welcome them with open arms. You bring them food, you bring them drink, you, you welcome them. And that's, you know, goes across many cultures. But Maybe in some ways that fireplace is that to me, is that, that stability, that warmth that things come from, from, from the hearth and from the home. San Pascual to me is, is such a gentle saint. You don't look at him and feel bad. You don't look at him and see wounds and sadness. And when people usually depict him, they depict him in such a beautiful, warm, humble, uh, nurturing way. He really is representational of my grandmother. My grandma Reynalda Almeida, she, she lived in this little casita in Santa Fe. And for her, her whole world was cooking and in the kitchen. So she knew the power of food, and she knew that if I cook beautiful, wonderful, delicious food, that brings people to me, and that's powerful. And she knew that that's what food meant. It meant togetherness, and it meant bringing people towards you. And so when I think of Pascual, I think of the same warmth and gentleness, and I, I respond to that. I love that. That's what I, I, I paint. Uh, St. Francis in the same way, and I, I, I think it's the, the, the whole Franciscan way of life of simplicity and gentleness and loving each other and, and, and joy, and I think that that's why I'm so drawn to him. Sometimes I will put another saint within the kitchen hanging on a retablo. You know, and I often will put St. Francis um, either in a little 
little statuette somewhere in the kitchen. I'll put St. Francis on, on a little placard as well. Um, but they're both Franciscans. Um, they both have that value of, 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 of humility and, and poverty. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm very much attached to those two saints. And I, you know, um, growing up Catholic, I, it's interesting, the priests that I tend to be very drawn to are Franciscans. You know, there's something really uh, different when, um, the, the, I don't know, there's something about the Franciscan priests that are just, there. There's, there's a humility, a humility to them and um, simplicity and warmth to them that I don't, I'm just, you know, drawn to the Franciscans. Tay asked me, uh, the curator here, what is he thinking looking around that arch? And I put my grandmother in that same arch. My grandmother was the type of person, very quiet, but she took joy in seeing other people being lively, other people eating, other people dancing. Other, she didn't need to be right in the middle of it to, to find joy out of it. And I, I think that when you cook, you know, you put the food on the table to a certain extent and you're waiting to see people partake of it. And when they have joy and they're enjoying your food, you get that same happiness. And I think that that, that sort of off to the side, I, I admire that because I tend to be the one, I wanna be in there, the, the one dancing. <laughs> I wanna be the one in there eating the food. And so I admire people that can take sort of a quiet joy and seeing other people enjoy their hard work. And, and so I think that's why I've depicted that sort of off to the side, you know, off to the side, sort of taking in other people and appreciating what we've done. In, in any of my work, try to take things to a different level or somewhere that, that hasn't been seen too much. I like to take things, if, if I'm seeing a cat drawn constantly sit up and very stiff, my, my instinct is to want to go somewhere else with that, just to, to be different or to, to be unique. But I also have owned cats, and when they're content, they're not sitting stiffly. They're usually on their back, and they are showing their stomach, meaning very vulnerable, meaning I'm content and I trust you, so it's okay for me to put this up to you. And so I wanted to sort of paint my cats like that, very content. So they've maybe eaten something that Pasquale's given them off to the side and they're happy and they're in the sun and they're content. So I, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy, you know, putting them on their backs. I just think it's just a very cute, vulnerable <laughs> position to be in. And cats are beautiful. I mean, they're, you know, there's very, there's a wildness to them that I enjoy painting and they have beautiful eyes and I love painting eyes, whether it be human or animal, but I just, because the, everything, the soul's behind all the eyes. So when you paint the eyes, everything comes alive. Growing up in New Mexico, um, the pigments that artists have had access to for hundreds of years are very earth, they're earth tones. They're browns and ochres and, you know, some reds, but they're pretty earth-based. When my husband and I in 1997 moved to Tucson, we were very close to the border. So the colors I, I, I was encountering constantly around me were very bright because Mexican people have access to very bright pinks and purples and blues and turquoise and, and really embrace color. I was influenced by that. I saw that around me. So I just, the earth tones, I don't, I do, love them being a New Mexican, but as far as my art, I just, I want to have access to all that vibrancy. I just feel color is so important. I put so much thought behind colors and how I put them together. It's very important to how somebody's interpreting something. And for me, I think that color is just an extension of the artist. And so, I like things bright, I like things brilliant, I like things to catch a person's eyes. And, um, you know, color's as important to me as composition and, and the medium I'm using and the quality of count, that color is as important, if not more important to me than, than all of that. And I put a lot of thought behind that. What looks well together and what doesn't look well together. And, you know, a few times I've chosen colors that, that, that were counter, counterintuitive to me and then had to go back and change them. So I'm, I'm, I very much, because I'm self-taught, have to, have to go with instinct on things.
I get collectors from, from all over the United States. I've had people buy from New York and Chicago, and, and um, sometimes they're Hispanic. Mostly, I, you know, I wouldn't say my original collectors are necessarily Hispanic. Um, it's it just a vary of people. It's, it's interesting because as an artist, one of the most amazing things when you do a show is seeing who comes into your booth. The people that are going to come in are going to come in because they're responding to something that you're doing. And I have just met the most amazing people, and it's usually people that say, that looks like my grandma, or that was my grandma, or I have met that memory, or I have, they have that connection. And, and, the, and, and it's just, they're varying, you know. I think as different as maybe cultures are, we're more the same than we are different. So people, you know, most of us have memories of our grandmothers cooking, you know, family. So I think it's more universal. They say love is in the details. You hear the devil's in the details, but for me, love is in the details. And so all those things, I don't ever just want to blah, 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 blah over a painting. Everything for me has to be, I'm working on this little box of lard and I'm looking at my mountain lard with the blue and the baby blue and that you know those things are important to me those little details are the things that you know they're so important to me I don't like ever just dancing over anything in any of my paintings if I'm working on something it's going to get my full attention while I'm doing it and then I'll work to the to the next part but while I'm focused that is the focus of my painting and it's just the way I work I don't I don't know how to do it any other way because you know it's it's funny my sister who's very loose with her painting she sees me painting she says, I've never seen anybody so tense painting in my life because I'm like this close and I've got this tiny brush and I'm very, it's just a different way of doing it, but I don't know how to do it any other way. <laughs> it's my insanity and I just don't know how to do it any other way. I, I, and I don't want to do it any other way, so it works. It's interesting how people are connected and things are connected connected to each other. I think in maybe 2007 or 2008, I had read online um, about the National Hispanic Culture Center and how they always took portfolios. And I think I sent, I just got some of the examples of my work and I wrote out a short bio and I just sent it in the mail and didn't really think about it again for years, I think, actually. And then, I think uh, Tay Nunn got a hold of me and said she was thinking of doing a Pasquale exhibit and that she had some of my work and what I would be interested. And I just thought it was such a great idea because he, San Pasquale is just so humble and quiet and this beautiful, quiet little saint of ours that we all love, but no one's ever given him that, that sort of venue. And so um, I thought it was beautiful that Tay organized that to give him a little bit of a make him feel good about himself, you know, he deserves it. So it's just interesting how, how in, in the art world, you know, you put out these little feelers and sometimes, you know, things work out for you for the, for the right reason they're meant to work out. So I was so happy, so excited about this exhibit. I have a lot of respect for Santeras and Santeros, the training behind what they do, the faith in God behind what they do. Um, there's 500 years of tradition, of technique, of, of knowing, you know, how things were done 500 years ago. And I don't approach things that way. So I think that that profession, I respectfully say no, I don't, I don't consider myself that. I just, I, I just don't. I think that, um, I just consider myself a folk artist, I guess. But I have the utmost respect for what they do because I feel like that foundation is, is sort of, I can, you know, have sort of jumped to a different art form and, and, and doing art in a different way because they've done what they've done. I'm crazy in love with Frida Kahlo. I love her. Actually, I've painted her three, three or four times. I love her, you know, she's dark, but she painted her reality and she painted what was going on in her life. You know, the fact that she's a Hispanic woman, of course, you know, had her own show, the first Hispanic woman, first Mexican woman to have her own art show. I admire she, her strength. I admire her use of color and her bravery and her subject matter. 
in uh, as far as New Mexico. I love Christine Montano Carey. I love her work. She's a traditional Santetta. Love her work. She's just very beautiful, beautiful artist and a beautiful person. Um, very humble. And the Santettas and Santettas are supposed to have that humility and faith. You don't always, always meet artists with that humility. <laughs> Sometimes you meet artists and it's, yeah. I don't know, they can have a sense of self sometimes that I, I don't know, I, I don't mean that to sound the way it does, but you know, when I meet an artist that feels, that's humble and grateful and blessed to be doing what they're doing, that's, I respond to that, I like that. If you want it bad enough, you have to put the energy and the time and the work behind it. Artists are a dime a dozen, and if you want it, you have to, get it seen by as many people as you can and find your opportunities and and work your opportunities and keep and be prolific and paint and keep doing what you're doing and be true be true to who you are because people are smart and they sense when you're not being true i tried something very different uh with what Barnes and Noble chose was so not my norm, you know, it was uh, not, not my, you know, when they contacted me and told me they were looking for a Hispanic artist to do, to, to, to have an image for their tote bag, I thought they were going to pick a gram in the kitchen or tortillas or something, and they picked something very, very colorful, but it wasn't what I assumed they were going to pick. And, um, they picked a sort of flowering tree with a girl reading underneath, and it, and it is Spanish in flavor and, and Hispanic in flavor, but it's it's not the, the the quintessential painting that I would do. So I think, and you know, I I continue to paint things I love, and I you know try to always do new new things and, and new new passions that I have as I grow as a person and experience new things. But I, I like to always go back to to what I'm used to doing and, and you know, honoring where I came from and honoring my grandma and, and, and I, I think I will always paint those things because they're part of who I am, you know. I feel like the reason that I do what I do is to honor my grandma and to honor that woman that, you know, went to eighth grade they never had a lot of money and quietly stood by, the, by while the rest of us enjoyed life and her food. And I always want to think about her when I do things because that makes me feel like she's still with me. So I, whenever I talk about my work, I can't not talk about that. And I hope that that's what, when people look at my work, that they can feel some of that. So I guess, yeah, that I can feel good that it, that I did talk about her and think about her.